Good morning everyone, welcome to Spain and welcome to this school. I hope you enjoy the presentation that you are about to see, which deals with the creation of digital stories and other materials. Okay, let's start by breaking the ice. My name is Andres Arevalo and I am a teacher in this school. And since I started in 2005, I have become more and more interested in the integration of ICT information and communication technologies with the reading and writing skills and from all, from all the subjects that I teach. I have to acknowledge the opportunity that I have been given because I was, uh, I was able to reflect on my experiences as a teacher and with the integration of ICT and I have been able to, to share these experiences with other teachers and colleagues, which is a very good thing for me. This presentation is going to be considered uh, as a journey, as a trip, and you're going to enjoy it. And this journey has, uh, is going to have three stops. The first one is going to be a theoretical presentation where I'm going to show you the, some of the methods or the approaches uh, or, or of the techniques of the application that I have used to create my materials. And then I'm going to show you some examples of the final products made by the, by the students and by myself. The second stop of the journey is going to be more practical because I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you some of the most meaningful and important, and important tools uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the Keynote, which is a program integrated in the Apple iPad. And then with these tools, with these resources I have taught you, you're going to create your own stories. And the third stop is going to be the most practical one because you are going to present the stories you have previously created to the rest of the audience. So you're going to be the stars of the film. Okay. Now I think it's time to show you the first video. I have to say that all the videos that I'm going to show you are original materials, original videos that my students and myself have created. And they have been created in all the subjects. Also, I have to say that, we, uh, that short videos are going to be played entirely. But we are going to watch only uh, fragments of the longer videos because obviously we have a limited amount of time. So let's go for it. I have to say that this video was made by my students that are in fourth grade primary education and it is about the water cycle. They have recorded their voices and they have drawn the pictures included in this video. Let's watch it. Evaporation. The sun hits the water and becomes water vapor. The water vapor rises and cools down. Condensation. Water vapor transforms into clouds. Thanks to the wind, clouds get together. Precipitation. The water falls down to the earth. It can be solid, like snow, and liquid, like rain. Solidification. When it is very cold in the atmosphere, the liquid, water, rain becomes solid, snow or ice. Melting. The sun hits the snow and it becomes liquid again. Which subject am I teaching with this video? Exactly, social science. I like to make videos in all the subjects that I teach because I think that uh, this concept of, of overall learning is extremely important. It's essential in infant and primary education 
because the students are in a stage of development where they focus on the here and now and they see reality as a whole so the connection the link between the different subjects that we teach and the methodology that we use is extremely important it is essential actually and this leads us to the next slide in this slide we are going to consider language as an iceberg with two tops being one top the l1 or mother tongue and the second one being the L2 or foreign language. Under the iceberg, we can find what uh, Jim Cummings considered or called the common underlying proficiency. This is a mechanism, a device that allows students to transfer the cognitive skills and procedures from the, uh, from the mother tongue to the second language. That is to say that many things that we use to acquire or to learn the language can be applied from the first language to the second one. And this can be summarized in the following slide, where we are going to compare the learning of or the use of languages uh, to the wheels of a bicycle. So a, bi a bike can have one wheel, being this wheel, the mother tongue. So a bike with one wheel can get you places, not many places, but it can get you places. A bike with two wheels, a big one and a small one, then the big one, the mother tongue, the small one, the foreign language, can get you more places, can get you further. A bike with two balanced wheels, I mean, uh, the balanced use in everyday life of the two languages, the mother tongue and the second language, can get you even farther. But if the bike has an engine, being this engine, the use and integration of new methods, new technologies, new approaches, new applications in our everyday life, this bike will get you farther and farther to the moon and back. Okay, now I'd like to talk about the different stages where teachers go through in relation to their attitude towards the ICT, new programs and new applications. And I have found, I have discovered that there are five stages. The first one is, I'm not interested in ICT. I prefer classic methods. The second stage where most or all the teachers go through is, I show my students some videos, some materials so that they can learn, which is a step forward. The third stage is I create my own digital materials because they adapt much better to the features of my students. The fourth one is I step forward, step beyond because I make my students create their own stories. And the fifth one is I publish my students' works and my projects in different sites, in different websites, in different social media even, so that everybody, teachers and other students, can learn from these projects and these uh, presentations. And now I have a question for you. I'd like you to reflect, I'd like to think about this and tell me which stage from these five ones, which stage would you consider you find yourselves right now? One, two, three, four, or five? I have to say that I have been through all stages. So, let's study or analyze every single stage more deeply. So, you remember stage number one was, I'm not interested in new uh, technologies, in new methodologies, in new approaches or applications. I prefer the classic ones. I prefer to read the books to touch them, to smell them. I prefer the interactive whiteboard. The question is that at the beginning, we didn't have many resources in the school. We didn't have iPads or laptops or interactive whiteboards. We just had uh, a computer and sometimes we had an overhead projector. The question is that at that time, I preferred to read books to my students and 
I remember that I used uh, this wonderful sto story that belongs to, to a series of books whose character is this dog called Spot. Then I realized that I had to make the books bigger because the audience of, w was very big. There, I, I had too many students and not all of them could read the book properly. So I decided to adapt the book and make it bigger. And I have an example here. Sorry. <clears throat> so during this, everybody could be able to, to read the book, enjoy with it, and dream with it. But then I realized that if students were able to participate in the process of making the book, they felt more involved and more motivated towards, uh, towards learning. And I did what you're going to see right now. I made a video recording their voices. Let's watch it. Spot's birthday party. Today is Spot's birthday party. He has invited all his friends. They are going to play hide and seek. Come on, Spot. Count to ten. Okay, man, ready or not? Who's under the rock next to the lamp? I'm Mr. Crocodile. Who's in the cardboard? I'm Mrs. Snake. Who's in the bath behind the curtain? I am the bear and I am eating jelly. Who's behind the coat next to the woods? We are the crazy penguins. You aren't trying your best, Mr. Lion. Oops, I'm sorry. Who's behind the door in the closet? I'm the monkey. Who's under the table? It's me, a spot. Who's under the cushion of the armchair? I am your friend, the tortoise. Thank you, friends. But what is under the balloon? My favorite present of all. Did you have a good time, Spot? Yes, man, I did. Okay. Let's continue with our journey through the different stages. And now it's time for the second one. Here it is. Remember that stage number two was, I start using videos or other materials that I look here and there. Some teachers start using what we call an educational block, because the educational block, as we're going to see right now, organizes all these videos and, and all these materials that, they want, that we want to present to students. So here's an example of one that I made several years ago and I have included PowerPoint presentations and I have included videos and I have included uh, links to other websites. Now that we are here, I'm going to show you another of the videos that I, that I made with my students. And this video is a conversation between the teacher and the students working the, the future with going to. Uh, in this video, the teacher asks questions to the students that answer them. I didn't include any photograph of the students, obviously, because of uh, the law of data protection. But I attached some characters to every single 
students conversation so that they can feel more motivated towards the video so let's watch it let's watch the presentation and a, and a short fragment of it <laughs> So let's select this one, for example. Are you going to go to the shopping center and what are you going to buy? I am going to go to the shopping center tomorrow and I am going to buy presents for my family. When are you going to go shopping for the next time? I don't know, but I think that I am going to go shopping next weekend. Okay, I think that's a clear example of... How are you going to go to school tomorrow? Okay, I think this is a clear example of, uh, of how this video works. Okay, let's continue. Here we are. Uh, something or a content that I find really difficult for students is when we have when we have to face the grammatical content. I like making videos uh, with grammatical contents because uh, because students like the explanations and you present grammar in a different way. So I'm going to show you this one. I'm going to present this video that deals with. The verb can in past, present, and future. Sabiendo esto, cogemos los sujetos y a continuación añadimos eh, will be able to, por la forma corta, y por último la acción principal. I will be able to draw a picture, o I'll be able to draw a picture, que yo podré hacer un dibujo. You will be able Así tenemos, you will not this is the negative form. O you won't be able to say, que tú no podrás cantar. O we will not be able to speak English. O we won't be able to speak English. Que nosotros. Ok. So as you can see the explanation is in Spanish and they normally understand these videos very well. All these videos have been made with different uh, techniques or programs, for example, the iPad or the Kinemas. An interesting activity with students would be to, to ask them to watch the video at home, to answer some questions, and the next day they can return to school with the answered questions and some other, or some other problems that they can have. And this is what we call a flipped classroom, and it changes the rhythm of the class because the work in the school is not the beginning of the process, but it is the last stage. Sometimes it is interesting to change the rhythm of the classroom. Now let's move on to stage number three. In stage number three, teachers start creating digital stories and other materials because they think these stories will adapt much better to, to the features, the characteristics of their students and the contents and the subjects that they are teaching. Many of them create and develop what we call the virtual classroom. The virtual classroom is a site created by Educa Madrid, which is also created by Comunidad de Madrid. It offers you the same possibilities of an educational blog, that is to say, you can include PowerPoint presentations, or you can include videos, you can show links to other websites, but also you can do many other things. For example, you can create a task and students can send you the task that can be uh, to draw a picture or uh, to, to, to write an essay or a PowerPoint presentation, etc. You can include this assessment of the task in the final evaluation. Also, you can create tests and students can do the test online. 
This is really interesting because you offer immediate feedback to students. The virtual classroom is very useful to develop gamification because teachers can create what we call a block of content and our students can get some points or what we call points of experience as they fulfill the task we tell them to do. Uh, you can establish uh, a conversation, a direct conversation with our students, which is very interesting too. And finally, we have to say that the virtual classroom of Educa Madrid is a safe environment for students and it guarantees uh, the students' data protection. Because every single student is given a different username and password. And now that we are in, in my virtual classroom, I'm going to show you another example of a project of a video that we have made. This video belongs to a series of ones dedicated to the Spanish painter Diego Velázquez. And this video is aimed at students that are in primary education. However, everybody and everywhere is invited to watch uh, the video because you can learn with it no matter how old you are. Let's watch the introduction and then a short fragment of it. or in English, a group of ladies are, are waiting. These are the main figures, especially the one who is at the center of the picture. This girl is Princess Margaret, who is uh, Philip IV's daughter. Okay, let's have an, uh, let's look at another picture. Not only cooking contests were popular in mythology, this painting is called The Spinners, Las Hilanderas in Spanish, or The Fable of Paracne. This is another example of a painting with a mythological topic, as the Greek goddess Athena is depicted on it. As I said before, virtual classroom is very useful to develop gamification. Gamification is a new methodology where game is not seen as the end or the purpose of the activity of the task, but it is seen as a means to reach an educational purpose. So it changes the rhythm of the classroom and sometimes it is quite useful and interesting to introduce this methodology. Stage 4 is an advanced stage because we create our own materials, but we make our students create their own materials too. They can do it at home, or they can do it in classroom using the iPads or other resources that we have. If they do it in classroom, they decide to do it individually or in pairs or in small groups. If they do it in small groups, they can choose if they share responsibilities, for example, all of them draw the pictures, all of them write the texts, all of them look for information, or they can choose if they are in charge of different tasks. For example, one is in charge of drawing the pictures, another is in charge of writing the text, another is in charge of looking for the information. And here I'm going to show you another, another example in which Diego Velázquez is the star of the video because they have made, they, the students have made a video uh, recording their voices and uh, looking for the information. This painting has a mythological subject. It tells the story of the Roman god Apollo visiting Vulcan and a group of men that are working at a forge making armors, hammers, swords, spears, etc. The men are sent Okay, let's watch this, this is which is the same video. Of the, head of the Catholic Church, Innocent 
terms. It shows the character's intelligence and it is considered the best portrait in the world by many artists. And we are arriving to the last stage of this uh, presentation. Stage 5 is the last one because I create my materials. I make my students create their materials and I publish the materials in different sites, in different websites, even in different social media. And here I would like to highlight the role of the social media. And the two social media that, that I use are YouTube and TikTok. Uh, but I, I, I just wanted to tell you a story before continuing. And it was one day that I was driving my car when I was listening to the radio and they were discussing the, the role of the social media, but they were talking specifically, they were specifically talking about uh, TikTok. And the average time that uh, young people, teenagers and even children used uh, this application. I don't remember how long it was, but it was crazy. It was crazy long. And I started thinking to myself, why don't we use this application for an educational purpose? That is to say, uh, instead of watching uh, ridiculous videos with ridiculous dances and sometimes dangerous challenges, why don't we use this application to learn something? The question is that I'm trying, so I have to learn a lot. Uh, I just wanted to tell you two pieces of advice related to, to the use of social media. The first one is to disable the possibility of writing contents because there are too many negative people hanging around. And the second is to be really, really, be extremely careful with the student's data protection and try not to include any picture or photograph of them or any other specific detail. Okay. Before finishing my explanation, I would like to talk about this point, which is the lockdown effect. One of the consequences of COVID-19 and the lockdown was that we were used to the concept, to the word resilience. Resilience is the capacity, the ability to overcome the negative situations, to adapt to them and to get the best of these situations. And we successfully did it during the lockdown because teachers with very low training with very poor training or no training at all, were able to upload videos, to organize online lessons, to work with the virtual classroom, to create a lot of materials, to make tutorials for students. So, fantastic for teachers during the lockdown. And I'd like to show you the last video of today's presentation. This video belongs to a series of um, materials that I created for my students that were in sixth grade of primary education. At that time, during the lockdown, I had plenty of time and I created lots of videos with the subject of the Earth at, uh, the, Earth at the Universe. Finally, I would like to reflect on the fact that it is very important to use new methods, approaches, uh, application programs and integrate them in our everyday life as teachers. But the question is that not all of them are valid for us. What we have to do is to select them and integrate them with the methods that have been always suitable for us, like taking care of handwriting, taking care of spelling, the use of books to touch the books and smell the books, the everyday effort 
We have to develop the everyday and personal effort because we are living in a society which is turning more and more competitive and we have to prepare students for this change in society. So the next thing I would like to present are some useful sites where you can find some information or some resources that would be interesting for you. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. It has been a pleasure to be here uh, sharing my experiences with you. I hope you have liked the school and I hope you liked Spain too. Thank you very much.